Welcome back. It's Thursday, it's Ask GMBN, and we're here to answer your questions. Yeah, if you have any, leave them in the comments section down below this video or use the hashtag Ask GMBN. You ready? Our hardest, yes. Right, let's kick it off. LS Jones, how many bike vault pictures do you get sent every week? We get loads of photos sent in, it's like tons. It's like. Yeah. I've not counted them, but it's got to be hundreds a week. We so. have a dedicated office just for we do, yeah. bike vault. It's called Martin. Ashton. It is, yeah. Right, Ryan Kelly. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Worst one. <laughs> if I were to change a bike with three, three chain rings at the front to a single, will I need to get a new crank set? Or well, depending on what cranks you are running. Uh, not necessarily, yeah. With double, it's a bit easier. Uh, with a triple, you can maybe just set your one chain ring up in the middle, but it does depend on the crank set, really, to be honest. Uh, Jojo Dell, when I do jumps on my bike, hashtag I ride an aggressive hardtail, my back wheel tends to be kicked up. Any any tips? Mm, he's that's the O tips. Yeah, getting kicked, but um, on a hardtail um, technique, I would say. It is technique. Yeah, you're lifting you're lifting your feet more than you're bringing your bike up with your feet. Yeah. So just curl your curl your toes, yeah. curl your feet on the pedals. So I would, yeah, one of two things, really, either try and get more front wheel lift or try and mellow out the rear wheel lift. So front wheel lift is all about the manual pumping and driving that front wheel up into the air. Um, tell you what, video yourself and send it in to Ask GMBN in slow-mo and yeah. we can uh, tell you how to correct it, hopefully. Correct me if I'm wrong. Exactly. Mirak Sushimal, I'm going to my first ever enduro race. What should I take with me in my backpack on the race day? Neil, I think this is one for you. Because you just come back from one. Um, to be honest, I take as little as possible if I'm racing. So a pump, uh, some tire levers, you might need those. A spare tube, maybe two. Depends how big the race is. And then just the fuel to get you around. So Energy. water and gels. Yeah. Yeah. But it depends how big the day is, really. But I try and pack as light as possible, really. It's the main thing. And a multi-tool, don't forget that, with a chain tool on it, just in case. Next one, Nick Brescia. I own a fat bike with 82 uh, mil width rims, so that's pretty wide, and a 4.8 inch tire. I ride this bike uh, like it's an all mountain machine. I was wondering if four inch tires would be better for cornering with that rim width. Um, well, I've got no experience in fat bikes. I've ridden one, and that was a three, no, it was a, it was a four inch. That's probably about as narrow as yeah. they come, uh, fat bike tires. I would say this depends on the sort of terrain you're riding it on. So obviously the bigger, wider tire is gonna float better. Mm. So if you are using it on sand or snow, snow. that's yeah. gonna work better. Four inch wide tires might work better on proper, sort of normal trails yeah. we call them, so dry, uh, dirt. I think it's gonna be more nimble, so there's less weight. So yes, it probably will corner a little bit better. Another tire question. Scootering TNC, what is so good about using tubeless? Oh, I'm recently converted to tubeless and I love it. Yeah. You can run lower tire pressures. You can go through like loads of, I, they were cutting the hedges and yeah. there was loads of thorns everywhere and I didn't even get one puncture. That is a big difference. Uh, uh, you're not gonna get those little punctures. Yeah. So the sealant in there is gonna fix those little holes yeah. and you can't get pinch punctures. So you can't pinch your tube. Which I get a lot. Yep. No, However, I don't. you can damage the tyre, so that's the one disadvantage. You don't run them on your like dirt jump bike. No, I don't. No, I still run tubes in the dirt jump bike. Yeah. If you're thinking about converting to tubeless, check out this video. It's going to give you some tips on how to do it. Okay, so we're going to talk about converting from a regular setup with a tyre and a tube to a tubeless setup. The main advantages of tubeless is you take away any risk of puncturing by pinching the tube. That means you can start running lower tire pressures so you might find more grip. Uh, it's also gonna be a little bit lighter so you've got less rotating mass on there. It makes a really big difference to how your bike rides. It'll make the bike feel more nimble. For the next question, Dave Clark asks, do I really need a torque wrench for installing higher torque components such as bottom bracket, cranks, cassette? I use one for the stem, bars, controls, etc., but don't really want to buy another one if I don't have to. Mm, well, there's a lot of bikes with carbon and I would suggest having a torque wrench all the time, putting it to the right Newton meters. That yeah. For, for BBs and stuff, I wouldn't, unless you've got a carbon frame. Yeah, I'm in the same sort of boat really. I have, have got one for my bar stem, etc. Yeah. Bottom bracket, I don't bother, to be honest. After, with a bit of experience, you'll sort of work out how tight to do everything. And I just have the one torque wrench that does the lower end stuff. So yeah, yeah. I think you're probably all right. Um, Cameron Gardiner, 
Should I buy a 27.5 or 29 er full suspension bike intended for trail rides, enduro, and occasionally bike parks? What would the differences be between the two with climbing, descending, etc.? Mm. For me, I would definitely go 27.5. And for me, I'm probably slightly erring towards 29. I've just put some 29 inch wheels on my Scott Genius LT for that exact type of riding. Um, I would say the difference is it feels more stable. It does feel to me like you get more grip. However, the payoffs for that are it doesn't quite feel so nimble. Yeah. Uh, it does feel like a bit of a bigger bike all round, really. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to climbing? Yeah. I don't know, it's tough. Maybe if you've got one bike that does everything or you want yeah. to do everything on it, maybe stick to the smaller wheels. But horses for courses, I would say. Personal preference. Yeah, I would say try and, try and ride both, test them out, yeah. see which you prefer. Go on a demo day. Yeah, that's a good idea. Anthony Holdway, I've just watched a GCM video. GCM? Why? And they answered a question, how much do you need to train to be in good form? I was wondering if the answer would be the same if you're training on a mountain bike only. Hmm. Well, I haven't raced much. So, Neil, this is your question, eh? Tough question. Uh, it depends how fit you want to be. How long is a piece of string? Yeah. The more you train, the fit you're going to be. Don't forget to rest. I would probably say on normal, three times to five times a week would probably get you pretty fit and mix it up with different, you know, short and hard stuff to more endurance stuff. But that depends on the type of riding and or racing you're going to do. So, tough question to answer, but... That's good enough. A couple of days a week uh, rest and the rest of the training. Uh, Manuel Jimenez, does adding bottomless tokens to your fork reduce its travel? If so, by how much? Mm. No, is the answer. It doesn't. Uh, it's going to just make a difference to how your suspension acts. So the more bottomless tokens you put in, the harder it's going to ramp, ramp up. up. Yeah. So it's going to get harder sooner, but it doesn't make any difference to the total travel. Uh, and you should check out our video on suspension jargon explained. So I'm here with Pete, who's a race tech at Fox. Pete, what does high and low speed compression mean? High speed compression is high shaft speed, and low speed compression is slow shaft speeds. So it has nothing to do with the speed you're riding the bike, it's the speed that the, your fork or shock is moving at? Correct. Generally, it doesn't have to do with the speed more so. Okay, so let's start with high speed compression. What does that deal with? What type of riding does that deal with? High speed compression is going to be impacts that make the suspension move quickly, such as braking bumps. Low speed is going to be anything that you do to the bike, uh, body input, such as braking or uh, pumping into a corner or over a roller. Are you ready, Neil? This is the uh... <laughs> quick fire round. <laughs> All right. Okay, rule. I'm using a 1x11 SRAM cassette drive on my Canyon Strive CF. Yep. Is it Me too. Is it possible to change it to 1 by 12? Yes. Eagle. Yes. Group so set. you'll have the SRAM driver on your hub already. So yeah. And it's gold, eh? Stump up the cash. You can have 1 by 12. Right, we've got Tobias. Can I use a narrow wide on a 1 by 10 SLX? Yes, you have to buy a chain for it. Yep. yep. Should be fine. Brandon, can you make a chain out of all master links? All master links. <laughs> Um, sort of. You would still need the narrow bits in between the master links, and I don't know why you would want to. It'd be an expensive way of making a chain, and it'd probably just snap anyway. <laughs> All right, Josh Smith, can you use a Shimano brakes on SRAM discs and SRAM brakes on Shimano discs? Um, yes, I think you can. I bet the manufacturers would say they probably wouldn't want you to. However, as long as it's the right size, then yes, it shouldn't make any difference. Perfect. Gappy, good name. Can I do a bar spin? <laughs> Can I do a bar spin on a downhill bike with triple clamp forks? Yes. No. You'd go. What? 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 Yeah, it won't work. But then, if you've got 180 mil travel, then. Um, yeah, there's nowhere around that, is there? Jordan, does it count as a manual if you're sat down in the saddle? Um, if you're not oh. pedaling, yes. Yeah, I would say so. Although I would probably call it a coaster wheel. Yeah, okay, sat yeah. Down. But same thing, really. Yeah. It's only the difference between manual and wheelies, just pedaling or not pedaling. Yeah, not exactly. pedaling. Not pedaling. All right, we got Mackie. <laughs> do you guys fix tune your own bikes or do you have someone to do it? Uh, do it ourselves, do we? Do it ourselves, mate. Occasionally take it to a bike shop if it's a tricky problem, yeah. but I generally do all of mine myself. Yep. I like so doing do I. it. It's good fun. Yeah. Gives you one with your bike. And we've got uh, Mac, 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 Mac here. <laughs> How old are you guys? 
I'm sure we keep getting asked this I question. Do, yeah. Uh, I'm old. I'm 35. How old are you? I'm 31. You're old as well. Yeah. We're both old. We're in our 30s. Yeah. Sensible. <laughs> right. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ron. Uh, so Oscar Adamson has sent in this video of him doing a whip. So it's time for your Ooh, I love whips. expert advice here, Blake. How can Ooh. he improve his whips? Well, he's got the right technique. It's pretty cool, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he is. That is pretty good. He's got the right technique, but if you want to learn to go bigger whips, it's kind of you've got to carve the lip. Yeah. Get the carve the lip, but you've got the right technique. You've just got to carve more. So Don't hip jumps are good as well, aren't they? Yes. You land in a bit more of an angle, so yep. you can literally like, naturally land a little bit carve sideways, a bit more. Yeah. But, but yeah, hips are a really good place to, to start learning a huge whip. So keep sending your videos into ask at gmbn.com. We'll take a look and help you out if we think we can. Yeah. Right, that's it. We've asked all your questions this week on Ask GMBN. If you loved it, click the logo to subscribe. Leave us any other questions down below and we can potentially ask them next week. Click down here for a video. It's called One Stop Box. Everything you need to take on a ride. Cool. Click over here for tyre pressures explained. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this week's Ask GMBN.